Praise the Lord. Turn your Bible, if you will, to the book of Matthew chapter 16. And uh, Matthew chapter 16, this is going to be your new memory verse for the week. Now, this is my recording. <laughs> okay, I, I worked hard at this one. Matthew 26, uh, Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 16, verse 26. Matthew 16, here we go. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I know, it's good. you're going to get it. For what, what is, is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Don't laugh too much. We can try it again. It's going to be worth it. Here we go again. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I know, I know, I know. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. You almost got it. Try again. Here we go. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Oh, oh, praise the Lord. You're there, Matthew chapter 16. I am thankful to be here tonight. Uh, the title of the message, if you look at that second part of that verse, and uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man, what shall a man give in exchange for a soul. The title of message this evening is going to be, What Would You Give in Exchange for Your Soul? I want you to stand with me for the reading of God's Word. We're going to read that. And before we read that, back in the early 1900s, there was a man named Robert Johnson, and he lived in Mississippi, and uh, he desired to be a good guitar player, and uh, he struggled with that. And Supposedly on U.S. where U.S. 61 and U.S. 49 cross in Rosedale, Mississippi, he went and he made a deal with the devil. And uh, he cried out to the devil and he said, uh, Devil, I'll serve you, live for you if you'll give me the ability to play the guitar. And sure enough, after that, he seemingly overnight went from not being able to play the guitar to being able to play the guitar his most famous song was about that instant, an instance called Traveling Riverside Blues. And uh, eventually, uh, the song or that uh, man right there, Robert Johnson, was sung about by Eric Clapton. He sang uh, the same song uh, called Crossroads, basically. And then Led Zeppelin uh, used some phrases from that same song. But he made a deal with the devil. And uh, he may have gotten the ability to play the guitar... Listen, what shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Right, right, right. And you think about what would you give in exchange for your soul? Let's read that verse together, if you will. Are you ready? Yes, sir. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? One more time. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give in exchange for your soul? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Yes, we need you, Lord. And this is going to be our memory verse. And as we memorize this, I pray that you help us to see our lives that you've given us as valuable. Yes, sir. And a little bit of money, a little bit of fame, a little bit of fortune, Lord, seems like a lot, but in reality, compared to eternity, it's nothing. And Lord, I pray that you help us to take a serious look at our own lives tonight. Yes. We love you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What would you give in exchange for your soul? 
And uh, on the way into church on Sunday evening, I was stopped by Brother Swabe, and he said, did you hear the news of the day? I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you didn't hear? And I said, hear what? And uh, he mentioned Kobe Bryant dying. And, uh, and I said, what? What are you talking about? And sure enough, uh, come to find out, uh, Kobe Bryant, the famous basketball, um, basketball player, died. Kobe Bryant was beloved. He was followed, and he was mourned a great deal over the last few days. And he was born August 23rd, 1978, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was uh, the son of an NBA player named Joe Bryant. His parents were eating in a restaurant, and they saw Japanese Kobe beef on the menu, and therefore they named their son Kobe Bean Bryant. Uh, when Kobe was six years of age, his dad retired from the NBA, and they continued his professional career over in Italy. And so Kobe Bryant grew up a large portion of his life over in Italy. And uh, he was raised as a Catholic. And he had been known to practice his faith. And during Kobe's time in Italy, he learned to speak, uh, speak fluent Italian. And uh, he also loved to play soccer. He came back, Kobe came back to the United States during his high school days. And he played at Philadelphia uh, the Lower Miriam, near Philadelphia, at the Lower Miriam High School. And by the way, he was a very, very good basketball player. You think about it, he uh, learned from his dad. He was trained as a young kid to play basketball, and he was very good. At the age of 17, he made the decision to go directly into the NBA, and that was not common at that period of time. The year before, Kevin Darnett had done it, and so he followed in the footsteps of Kevin Darnett, and he was drafted with the 13th overall pick in the 1996 draft by the L.A. or Los Angeles Lakers. He began a 20-year career in which he was an NBA All-Star 18 times. He played alongside of players such as Shaquille O'Neal and was coached by the very famous Phil Jackson. And Kobe Bryant, in those 20 years, won five NBA champions. Uh, chips. He had two NBA Finals MVP awards. He was the league MVP in 2008. He was also the two-time NBA scoring leader. Kobe made a lot of money over the years from a lot of different things. He represented Coca-Cola, Nike, McDonald's, Spalding, Upper Deck, and Adidas. In 1999, Kobe met Vanessa Lane. He was 21, she was 17. They got married in 2001, and at that time, Kobe's parents would not attend the wedding. They had a problem with him marrying so young and also marrying a non-African American. This difference was reconciled in 2003 after the birth of their first daughter, Natalia. In 2003, Kobe Bryant was accused and arrested of raping a 19-year-old girl in Eagle, Colorado, and this was settled out of court in 2004. The Bryants had a second daughter, Gianna, and she was born in 2006. In 2011, Vanessa, his wife, filed for divorce, and this was called off two years later in 2013. The Bryants had a third daughter, Bianca, in 2016, and their fourth daughter just last year in the year 2019. Kobe Bryant retired from the NBA in 2016, and he launched into his business career. And uh, not long ago, he invested $6 million, and that was in 2014, into a sports drink called Body Armor. And in 2018, Coca-Cola purchased that company, and Kobe Bryant's uh, initial investment of $6 million uh, became worth $200 million. Kobe Bryant has written books, composed music, and lived a very lavish lifestyle. He was rich and famous, he had everything most people want. The morning, this last Sunday morning at about 7 a.m., Kobe Bryant visited the Lady Queen of Angels Catholic Church in Newport Beach, which is south of Los Angeles. And uh, early that Sunday morning on January 26, and he had that mass, and his father was Steve Sallett. And uh, Father Steve Sallett said this, he said, we shook hands. And I saw that he had blessed himself because there was a little holy water on his forehead. Bryant, 41, and his family were regulars at the Catholic Church there in Newport Beach. At about 9 a.m., Kobe and his daughter Gianna took off in a helicopter. They were traveling to a basketball practice. During the flight, in the midst of a deep fog, the helicopter 
ran in the side of a mountain, only 20 feet from the top. The helicopter crash killed all nine people aboard. Kobe Bryant, 41 years of age, at that moment, along with his daughter, stepped into eternity, a practicing Catholic. I heard that he passed away, by the way, once again, on Sunday night. I've never been much of a fan of Kobe Bryant. I didn't think something, if you would have told me last week that that happened, I said I would think in my mind it wouldn't affect me that much, but it did. And I've thought about it over and over and over the last few days. And um, one of the members of our church had a neighbor come, and his neighbor is almost in tears. Did you see her? Did you hear that Kobe Bryant died? Talked to our missionary, Chris Faulkner, on Monday, and he, I asked about Kobe Bryant. He said, yeah. He said, I, I heard about that from my wife when I woke up, and I, he said, I've been moved with emotion. I just can't believe that he died. Professional player, Kyrie Irving, very famous, found out about his friend dying, uh, and he walked out of the arena on Sunday evening. He couldn't even play the scheduled game on that Sunday night. He was overcome with emotion. Former players, coaches, and fans have been moved to tears over the passing away of this legend, Kobe Bryant. He was rich. He was famous. He was successful. Now, here's what I'm getting at. He was profitable, profitable by the world's standards. Now, we're going to go to that word profit, if you will. Profit is gain. Profit is some sort of advantage. And the Bible has a lot to say about profit, has a lot to say about gain. Kobe Bryant, by the way, was profitable by the world's standards. Now, the Bible, in Genesis chapter 25, the Bible says this, And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Do you remember the story? Hey, what gain is this birthright going to do for me when I die? Genesis 37, uh, the, Judah was talking to his brethren. They were going to kill uh, Joseph. And he was in that ditch. He said, what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? And uh, praise God at that time, Judah stepped in and really in some ways saved his brother. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2, treasures of wickedness profit nothing. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 4, riches profit not in the day of wrath. Uh, Proverbs 14, 23, in all labor there is profit. Amen. In all labor there is profit. I uh, picked up a man. Uh, he was uh, panhandling outside of a, uh, a gas station earlier this week, and he was asking for money. And uh, so I, instead of giving him money, I found out he needed a ride somewhere and gave him a ride. And as I picked him up, he was asking for money. I gave him a ride, and I talked about the profit of working. And I said, hey, listen, what will help you at 40-some years of age is get to work, get to work, work. Amen. And uh, he said to me, well, I have a job. I work. And I said, well, tell me about it. And he said, well, I really haven't been able to go lately. I've, I've been sick, and I can't get to work. And, you know, he said he worked, but in reality, he didn't work. The Bible says in all labor there is profit. Isaiah 44, verses 9 and 10. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. Profit. Isaiah 48, verse 17. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. By the way, the Bible has a lot to say about profit. A lot. A lot to say about gain. A lot to say about advantage. Uh, Jeremiah 7, verse 8. Ye trust in lying words that cannot Profit. By the way, in these verses, you'll notice there's a good prophet, but there's also a bad prophet, is there not? Uh, there is some things that God is trying to encourage you to, to gain, and he's also trying to discourage you from gaining. Jeremiah 12, verse 13, but shall not profit. It says, they have sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. They have put themselves in pain, but shall not profit. And they shall be ashamed of your revenues because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Malachi 3, 14, ye have said... It is vain to serve God, and what profit, ye have said this, it is, you've said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? By the way, some people question keeping the Bible. What profit right there? And they're saying, hey, what profit, what am I going to gain by following the Bible? Can I just say a lot? Amen. A whole lot. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Boy, there's so many more in here about profit. In John chapter 6, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. 
the flesh profiteth nothing. Acts 20, verse 20, and Paul speaking to the Ephesian pastors, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. Praise God for the Apostle Paul who is willing to tell him the truth. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 33, the Apostle Paul says, For even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Boy, 1 Timothy 4, verse 8, my life verse, for bodily exercise profiteth little. Some of your life verses also, I can see. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. And then Titus 3, verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Now, point to this. There's good profit, there's bad profit. Do you understand that? There's something good. Profit by the world's standards. Profits by the world's standards. It's worldly, it's profit or gain by the world's standards. Money, fortune, fame. Uh, the, the world will say, hey, money, fortune, fame. What you want is money. What you desire is fortune. What you desire is fame. Boy, people would look at Kobe Bryant. Woo! Five NBA championships. Woo! He gets to fly helicopters everywhere. Woo! Boy, he gets to have billion, almost a billion dollars. He's worth $600 million. Boy, he is successful. He's what I want my kid to grow up to be. We need to get his jersey and put it on my back. Profitable. The world calls him very successful. Boy, but profit by God's standards different. Yes, Spiritual. Yes, Boy, you know it's profitable to be saved. Amen. Praise God for the gift of eternal life. Praise God that for whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Praise God that you can follow in believers' baptism. Woo! Glory be to God. Right. You know, that's all over the Bible. Do you ever think about Saul? By the world's standards, say he was not successful. Saul, by one time he was, he, he lived his life to kill Christians. Then on the road to Damascus, hey, God uh, shined that great white light. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And next thing you know, he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And he gets gloriously saved. Amen. Amen. You ever thought about that? Imagine him getting to Antioch. Imagine him going to that synagogue. He'd just gotten baptized. He'd just gotten saved. And there he goes in the synagogue. And people don't know what happened to him. And he gets up there and he says, listen, boys, I made a mistake. Boy, that Jesus who I've been persecuting, I've realized that he is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. What happened to you? Well, where did that come from? Boy, imagine the, the, the good old boys club back in the coffee room at the break at the synagogue. Man, did you see what happened there? What happened? All? And they're not even realizing the full extent of it. But another day goes by. He gets back up. Hey, you okay now, Paul? Let me tell you about Jesus. Boy, he is the way, the truth, the life. Unless you trust him today, you're going to die and split hell wide open. Woo! Boy, imagine, imagine one of the guys come and say, hey, hey, Paul, uh, Saul, let me talk to you for a second here. Come here. What's going on? What happened to you? Don't you know, you know, if you keep on like this, you're going to lose your job? Don't you know you're going to lose your friends? Don't you know you're going to lose your influence? Don't you know you're going to lose everything, Saul? Don't you understand you're giving this up for what, Saul? Don't you know you got to, I don't know what's in the water that you drank. I don't know if you got food poison. I don't know what's happened to you. But listen, I'm your friend trying to tell you, knock it off. Get back to the old way. You know, uh, Saul answered that when he turned his name to Paul. He said this. He said, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss, the loss, the loss of what? All those worldly things that they consider gain, the, wi the wealth, the fame. I count but suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, dung that I may win Christ, which leads to this. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Think about that. Boy, we think about what is gain. There's worldly gain. Boy, the world preaches it and preaches it and preaches it, hammers it down. 
and hammers it down. You need to be wealthy. You need to be famous. You need to have this. But then there's the spiritual gain is so far much better, being saved, being baptized, and living for the Lord. What would you give for your, in exchange for your soul? You ever think about the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, he is God in the flesh. Amen? We know that. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this, For he hath made himself to be sin for us who knew no sin. Amen. Hey, Jesus never sinned. Right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, But was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Jesus is perfect. But you remember reading Hebrews chapter, or not Hebrews chapter, Matthew chapter 4. You remember reading that? Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 4. Yes, sir. Satan, he was up there and, he, you know, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and he was tempted of the devil. <laughs> Satan came and tempted Jesus. The Bible says he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, Satan said this. He said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Uh, but he answered and said, and this is what Jesus said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, hey, I don't need that worldly gain. I'm the spiritual. Amen. Spiritual's what matter. Right. I don't need the worldly fame, the worldly pleasures. Hey, I'm, I'm God. I'm seeking the spiritual. Yes, and praise God for that. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and setteth them on a pinnacle of the temple and saith them, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Woo! And again, Jesus said, He said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Here's Satan trying to offer the carnal. Jesus points us to the spiritual. He knew no sin. He was without sin. He's giving us an example that, Hey, we ought not choose the world, but we ought to choose Christ. We ought not choose the worldly, the fame and the fortune. We ought to choose to living for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto them, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Do you notice that? that that's a key phrase. Jesus, I'm going to give you everything. Everything that your flesh could desire. Wealth and fame. By the way, he knew no sin. He was tempted in all points as, like as we are yet without sin. And Jesus responded immediately, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Praise God. Amen. What an example of, imagine Satan coming to you and saying, Hey, all these things will I give you. I'll give thee if you'll fall down and worship me. What if Satan made you that offer? What if he made you that offer? Robert Johnson, remember him? Sold his soul to the devil for the ability to play the guitar. The guitar. Casey Bill Weldon, in 1936, sold my soul to the devil. It's interesting, there's a group recently called Suicide Boys. Not good. They wrote a song, Sold my soul to Satan, waiting in line at the mall. Three lines of it, mass appeal is real it seems, mass didn't appeal to me, 666. It, but the whole song is horrendous. Bob Dylan, in a 60-minute interview, in that 60-minute interview in 2005, when asked why he's still making music and touring, Bob Dylan replied, it goes back to the destiny thing. I made a bargain with it a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain to get to where I'm at now? Bradley, should I ask you who you made the bargain with? And he smiled and say, with the commander and chief. On this earth, he began to laugh. On this earth and the world, we can't see. And, and that may be funny. People may laugh at that and say he was joking, but it's not a joke. Right. Nothing to joke about. Nope. Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin, he was known to have purchased the former home of the infamous uh, dark occultist Aliester Crawley. It's wicked. He's rotten. Right. Beyonce, demon possessed. Sasha Fierce is her demon that possesses her. Katy Perry has talked about selling her soul to the devil. And Jay-Z and continues on and on and on and on and on. They have wealth. They have fame. They're put up on the, uh, the Super Bowl halftime show for all of your kids to watch and enjoy and put as an example of what you want to be when you grow up. You know, you can get a bill of sale. 
Uh, it's a, uh, if you look it up, and a bill of sale that will show, help you sell your soul to the devil. And uh, there's a part of it right here. Once often neglected aspect of selling a soul to Satan is the value of the soul in question. There have been some fairly rigorous valuations of the average human soul, but these are the just median values as rendered in U.S. dollars. This is a useful meter, meter but clearly not everyone's soul is worth the same. Uh, we here at LegalTemplates.net have valued our souls at basement prices, being both in the legal field and an internet company. But yours is probably worth a quite bit more. According to Business Insider, the average human soul was worth $2.8 million in 2013, and we can start there. There are other considerations, how, however, how often you sin, your worst sin, your religious background, how frequently you curse, especially when you take the name of the Lord in vain, the amount of time you spend studying the religion or scripture. They make a joke of it, but it's no joke. Right, right. That's the point. They make a joke, but it's no joke. What would you give in exchange for your soul? If Satan came to you and said, all these things will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Now, let me ask you, can people be wrong? Yes. Can people be wrong? Amen. What about Judas? Was he wrong Amen. for selling out for 30 pieces of silver? Amen. I would say, and I'd look back and I'd say, you are wrong. Right. Boy, wrong, wrong, wrong. For us, what is right? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word, word is truth. Amen. Boy, this is right. Amen. This is our guide bit. This is what we live for. Amen. Who's our example? Jesus. Right. He saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Which leads to this, Pastor, you know, I don't know why you're doing this on a Wednesday night. This is, you know, you should probably be quiet about this. Just let it be. I mean, you know it's there. It's on every newspaper. It's all over the place. You just be quiet. Pastor, you probably shouldn't even mention Kobe Bryant. His daughter, Gianna. Did I say they're Catholic? I'm not picking on the Catholics, but have you ever looked at the doctrine of the Catholicism? It's a false gospel. It's a work salvation. Am I wrong with that? I mean, are we, am I wrong? It doesn't matter. Does the Bible tell us wrong? The Bible shines a light that's clearly wrong. It's wrong. It causes people to die and go to hell. So just imagine with me for a second. Imagine the moment after the plane crash. Imagine... Gianna, imagine her. She looks at her dad a little bit differently. Can you imagine why, Dad? Why do we live this way? Why don't we spend more time seeking the truth? We have all this time to play games. We have all this time to look for money, and championships, and business, and deals, and funds, and games. What about my soul? What about my soul? Right. It's whether you believe the Bible's real or not. Right. That's hard. Should I be quiet about it? No, sir. No, sir. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than to God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Right. Amen. Right. People need the truth. Jesus is the truth. You ever heard that song, Redeemed? Yeah. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. I don't know, I messed it all up. But listen to this verse. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. I cannot be silent. I cannot be silent. Boy, this time 
when people's attention's all of a sudden hitting that button where they're realizing that death is real, it can happen to somebody 41 years of age, even Kobe Bryant, they need to realize that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. I sing, for I cannot be silent. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Would $600 million do it for you? Would five world championships do it for you? Two MVPs of the NBA Finals or two scoring championships or being able to ride in a helicopter or be able to look at, have people look at you and say, wow, look, that's Kobe Bryant. What would you give in exchange for your soul? For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Luke chapter 16 is where I'm going to close. There was a rich man, had everything, fared sumptuously, clothed in purple. There was Lazarus, sores, begging for crumbs, licked by a dog. They both died. Done. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes in torment. He begged for one little drop of water. Then he began to realize this isn't just for a little bit of time. This is forever, forever, forever. Do you remember the last part, what he started thinking about? His brothers. He was wishing somebody would tell him. Show him the Bible. Show him the way. You know, Kobe, if he never was saved, he's begging right now saying, hey, tell him. Somebody tell him. Who's going to tell him? Christians. Christians. Well, this week, when you get that neighbor or somebody who begins to weep or talk about death right there, you see that their heart is all of a sudden being weakened or not weakened, but sensitive towards death. Tell them about Jesus. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We need you, Lord. And God, I do pray for his family. I do pray for all of the hurting people out there. And there's a lot of them. I'm not hardened toward that. But I know the answer, it can be a pat on the back, but a pat on the back without Jesus doesn't go very far. And I pray that you somehow, some way, some form or fashion, have a group of Christians get up and cry loud, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you help us to have compassion on them, making a difference. Lord, I pray for young and old alike. When we get tempted to sell our soul, our Christianity, our walk with you for a couple of dollars. Help us to say no, absolutely not. Help us remember the example of Saul, where he forsook everything. He counted those things but dung that he may win Christ. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen.